Hey guys, this is Rainwolf from Convention Video, and we are doing our post show, or also known as our final words, for season one of 86. Hey guys, Kirito Silverheart here. And Asuna Silverheart. Lyria. All right, it's your show. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I mean, okay, so, I mean, what can we say? What can we honestly say about 86 that we really haven't already said throughout the series? I know that, for me, I've been doing a lot of, like, in-depth research on the wiki and cross-referencing it with the light novels. Lyria, you've been reading the light novels and trying to get caught up I, on things with it. I have read the light novel all day today. As what I've done this entire day is read the light novel. <laughs> Asuna and Wolf here have threatened to kill us if we yes. go too far Hi. into our analyses. So let me just start off with this. Uh, last week, at the end of the episode, we got tagged with a special episode. Mm -hmm. So we went to Crunchyroll the other day. We were having trouble finding it at first. We finally came across it. Yeah, because they titled it as a... They bracketed it off. They pretty much made it its own little series. They almost yeah. treated it like an OVA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's the word for it. Pretty much, yep. Yeah. Yep. I watched it, and I kind of saved everybody the, the bother, really, of watching it, because all it was a recap episode voiced over by Lena, and she literally goes through the entire season, as we've already done, and points out key issues and key moments. So nobody really missed anything until you get to the last 10 15 seconds of the show of the show after they do the credits it's a very weird mech yeah mm. and it's black yeah we see what almost looks like the same body style as a juggernaut it's got a very similar core body shape the legs the main difference is is instead of the two legs in the front we also get what almost resemble two pincers in the form of like winged blades yeah and now I can actually say what my thought is on that whole thing right there. Because we all know Shin kind of lost his dome in the, la the end of the last episode. Because if it is Shin, and he's actually a shepherd, or a shepherd, or even just a legion, whatever we want to call this, I have a feeling his mentality might have been, he's going to be that odd unit, but also that he kind of takes over and that the legion does has no control over him. So he kind of so comes you so you rogue. Think this you think that this new this new mech is going to be Shin? Yes, because from what we have from the la what information we have from the last episode, because it does show him with his brother taking him, but also it should also shows an image with him not having his head. True. Yeah, I I don't I think though that was more of a hallucination or a dream. I don't necessarily think that was actual reality, but that may be like wishful thinking on my part. I'm going yeah. So so you kind of feel that this was more of a an acceptance of his fate. Yes. That he was yeah. ready to die. Yeah, if, I if definitely that's what feel like to. it was more of an, a, he was accepting the, the fate that, you know, this is what's going to happen to me. Whether or not it happened. I didn't think about that, but yeah. Is is a question. But yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it could very possibly, I could be wishful thinking. He may be dead. You're on the hopeful side. I'm on the dark spectrum of. Yeah. Well, so we got the optimist down. and the pessimist. <laughs> yes. It's a damn shame. You hate to see it happen. <laughs> <laughs> hate to All see right. it happen. I know Leary is going to be catching up on it here in the next day yes. or two. She's going to be delving deeper into volume two. I already know the answer, so I will neither confirm nor deny either one of your perspectives at this I'm point. I'm off the next I am two days. Waiting. I can drive three hours and uh, kick your ass. <laughs> and I am not going to give my opinion because I'm going to be getting my opinion tomorrow, so I'm not even going to try because I'll, I'll find out tomorrow. Yeah, I will neither confirm nor deny either one of your viewpoints at this point current moment at this current time <laughs> yeah trust me once season two pops it's all bets are off i'm gonna be going crazy with this information but the other thing that we get after we see this mech is we get our announcement for the next season and yeah. my life is gonna be hell i think all of ours are gonna be <laughs> yes so we're going to the get announcement very busy. well very yeah busy. the thing is you have let's see here as some of you know, what this channel is all about, we cover conventions, we do and we what we love doing, talk about things, animes, games, whatever. But now that cons are coming back, my life, on the other hand, Kirito and Asuna only have one con to deal with during the time frame. Do you want to see what the time frame this second season is being released? 
Yeah, so we have confirmation that 86 next season will be coming back this fall in October of 2021. And we had a quick discussion about this off air before the show tonight. We are also facing the fact of not only do we have con season coming back with several conventions uh, coming back, but here in the next couple months through the end of the year, but we also have 86 Yashahime's second season. Mm -hmm. And at some point, which it was estimated around fall as well, Sword Art Online Progressive, mm -hmm. which is the movie that kind of goes back to the original Iron Ironcrad days and gives and us a new perspective. Yep, as soon as perspective at the BS Act. To a yes. degree, yes. Uh, but since y'all have Neko, me, I have Neko. Then I have the editing for that afterwards. Then I have Yamakon a month after that. Editing after that. I just have podcasting, but I'm here to... You have I'm three children. Keep the, you I have, have three children. <laughs> I have three children. Yes. You, you have enough. To, I'm here to help you all try to keep your sanity. Here. I'm your emotional support, Lyria. <laughs> here for you with all that it's gonna be a blast i'm gonna love it but let's get back into 86 so anything from i know because kirito and lyria have been reading the light novel manga one of the two or a mix of both any perspectives or information from the series that you kind of wish they did better okay okay here we go here we go okay so there's a lot of stuff about the anime that i enjoy i enjoy the music i enjoy the visual visual here we go emotional aspect of it but the light novel you get a lot more of their like psyche mental because that you can dive more into the specific character and you get more of their perspective and you get more of their inner dialogue which mm -hmm. i enjoy and then also the light novel goes a lot more into backgrounds and things like that so I enjoyed that aspect, too, because you learn more about the characters in the light novel, which I'm hoping we learn more in the anime as it goes on. We've gotten a good little bit of their background, their history, especially with our primary characters, yeah. such as like Shin or Lena. Yeah, because you can't cover them all within a 23, 25 yeah. minute time frame. Yeah, this has been the story of what? Every video <laughs> yeah, and referenced uh, material that we've ever seen. You know, look yeah. at the Harry Potter series. Seven books, eight movies, or six books, seven yeah. movies, whatever it was. But, seven and, books, eight movies. <laughs> yeah. And they go through and they, they have to restructure the time frame of events on certain things. They have to kind of background certain characters to bring others more into the light. They cut things. They skip things. They compile things. It's going to happen whenever you're going from print to visual media but also exactly. for them to keep the quality of the animation they put through all the way through but, yeah i never really saw a dip in animation i'm i'm not sure i probably wasn't really paying close enough attention but animation really either. stuck through the whole time yeah they the quality was excellent and i will say reading the light novel and then watching the anime like the print to adapt the adaption is amazing it like they did an amazing job so i i'm very 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 happy with it there's just there's some things that i would change but i am a huge book nerd and i'm never going to be 100 percent happy with <laughs> video version there is something i want to bring up a little bit because i brought it up kind of when i was editing over the week uh for last week's episode it was about the mechanic so as we we found out Karen Karen is actually not that old. Um, there's not big that big of an age gap between them. Oh, Karina. About a, yeah, Karina. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's still younger than them, but it's only like, is it was it two years? A, a year. year. It was a year. Yeah. So I mean, they were all fairly young too. So if if you're going off the assumption, you know, that school starts when you're, you know, five. Yeah. You know, if they were six, she may have just turned five. She was getting ready to start school, but she never made it. No. Nope. So, or something like that. Or, you know, they could have just been five and she was four. I mean, yeah. that's how young they, that's how long this has been going on, but how, you know, how young they are also. Yeah. From what their age, everybody else was 351 and she was born in 352. I thought, it was, what's up? Was it 353? Yeah, 351. From what you put, uh, they were all born in 351, and she was born in 352. Okay, yeah, yes, yes. Because that would make it a year difference. And at the time, the 86 sectors started at 358. So 
about six, five to ter- five turning into six, give or take the time of the year is where her age was actually around. And I wasn't paying attention to all when their birthdays were, but their birthdays were all scattered throughout the year. So, and this puts in now going into the mechanics side of things, this really put him and I'm, as we've said it before, how has he put through all this? It's been, he's gone sending people out, give or take eight years. Who knows how many units that could have been over eight years? Yeah, that's been a ridiculous amount. So he's been through some time, and over the eight years, nobody's killed him yet. Yeah, I mean, and, and delving into some research on the wiki and everything, I'm actually not finding any information on just how long he's been. I kind of had to do a lot of hopping around information. Yeah, there's no really exact spearhead information, like who was actually with Spearhead or not, but just his time when the, the camps, or you would call, or 86 compounds started, to the time we got when Shin and them were leaving, just doing that math right there is, was pretty much the simplest thing to do, easiest way to f- try to get at least some lee ground on it. Not fully 100% solid information in detail, but it's enough to uh, at least give us some perspective on how his life has gone since the camps has started and actually how long he's actually, it's actually been since he's lost his wife and daughter. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, I would assume by at least the second or third year that they were actually using the 86 as processors yeah. is about the time I, that he would have been in there. Um, I mean, we saw in the series when Lena was looking at the reports, we saw numerous spearhead squadrons. Yeah. And that's what kind of really, really worries me right there. But see, now that you bring that up, that kind of really puts it spearhead into a really deep history, even though it's only been around for give or take eight years. Yeah. And maybe five, who knows how many of those are actually units when they started to be younger and younger, when all the adults had started to. Dead. Yeah. Mm hmm. I've done some other digging too, but I didn't really do deal deep into it because I needed to finish editing. I had to stop myself. <laughs> Understandable. I always forget they can't see me visually because I'm making this most the most awful thing <laughs> right now. I'm just like thinking about it. It's very traumatic. If we eventually get avatars together, this will be it'll be phenomenal. They'll be able to see your facial expressions, but not <laughs> mine will break. It'll be like it'll just break like i i make the my sister always says i make the best faces she's like you make the best face <laughs> and I, I i don't know if that's what you would call it right now i make i make the most traumatized face <laughs> so any other words for 86 as a whole well so i actually found a little interesting piece of information uh and this was actually thanks to a tiktok i found of all things oh yeah i know what you're talking yeah. about yeah uh, so a few episodes ago, uh, when the last five members of 86 in the Spearhead Squadron are preparing for their special recon mission, a.k.a. their death march, it starts to rain. And Karina decides, uh, along with Anju, that they should try to do the special ritual that some of their friends, uh, particularly Kersh Blut, had suggested doing. And throughout the scene, we see them, you know, doing various things throughout the camp and in their dorms and things like that. But they make these little like tissue paper ghost shaped dolls and hang them together in a window. I actually uh, found out, thanks to this, that this is actually a special ritual in Japan culture, in Japanese culture called uh, Teru Teru Bozu. And from what I understand, it's basically a a prayer for good weather. And uh, oh. like good energy and good vibes and things. I was like, that's really cool. I was like, the fact that the, the series was, and even I'm assuming in the light novels as well, brought this in to show, you know, just the, a, a pure Japanese culture. When we look at the series as a whole, it's very reminiscent of a culture that is defined by like German, French. Yeah, it really There's influences. lots of German and French influences. Yes. And you don't really see a, the only you see a lot the Japanese style here and there, but not as much as the others. Yeah. So it makes me kind of wonder if this was 
yeah, you know, if if kind of like in the time frame of the of the show and and the world revolving around eighty six as a story, um, if it's one of those kind of semi utopian societies where everybody is kind of melt you know melting potted together mm-hmm. with various backgrounds and influences, which I mean we see a lot of that in our culture today. Yeah, but with this, it is so much more open and accepting up until the point, of course, of this war. <laughs> Yeah. When everybody's just like, nope, screw them because they look different and we're going to protect ourselves. I think more it's more of the 86 or more of the melting pot because it's, you know, they're the ones I feel like more so than any. There's multiple influences. Yeah. Um, I feel like the 86 were more of the melting pot because, you know, there's a small at the end of the day, you know, the Alba. Oddly enough, they're, they're, I feel like, you know, they're not necessarily, maybe where they are, they're the majority, but in other places, they're the minority. It almost feels like, you know, they've taken people who were maybe from other countries who had came there and other places, people who weren't originally from there, and they've taken these people who were of other cultures and put them t- to be the 86. Yeah, because... What are, whoever was around when this whole thing got implemented, you were pretty much screwed. Yeah, I mean, so if you weren't an Alba, if you weren't originally from their land... Yeah, if you're an Alba, are we able to get the heck out before everything yeah. kicked off? Which, again, you know, brings in the, the whole World War II influence of the series that we talked about previously in our, in our discussions. The creator of 86 himself was very influenced by World War II and Nazi Germany and fascism. and Well, it's really, it's, it's xenophobia, really. And, yeah. I mean, and xenophobia, and there's a lot of things with in Japan, xenophobia, like, it's a theme that runs very deep. Be it because, you know, Japanese culture is so private and kept so secretive, kind of, to a degree, that they really try to reserve what, you know, the things they have. And, you know, maybe if that's not necessarily, you know, it could be xenophobia on their part, but it, it also in other countries, too. I think they also hold those things dear because other countries will come and try to take those away. I mean, you know, if you think about it, Westernization and us having westernized so many other countries, capitalism and things have seeped into those countries that were that those things weren't necessarily there. before. So it's I think that's kind of what this reflects it's that xenophobia and that fear of other cultures and the fear of other people whereas the 86 have embraced it and they've merged it you know the alba have you know tried to purge it from their society they've tried to make those things go away and forget it it also helps them see the 86 not as people so i mean that that's part of it too if they if they don't accept those people's culture then they don't have to see them as people yeah so I have a question for the group. Mm. What did everybody think about the way this season ended? Because in doing my research and things, I know now where it's progressing to. And it made me really stop and think that the season could have ended with the battle between Shin and his shepherdized brother. That would have been a because of the way they animated it and the dialect of it. That would have been a pretty good spot to end it. Okay, so now the official name of Shepherd Eye's brother is now Robro. <laughs> Robro. <laughs> Ro- Robro is now his official name. That is what we are calling him now. For anybody that was joining us during our Yashihime coverage of season one, we stumbled across a we stumbled across somebody online who referred to the spirit in the tree of ages as Trikio because and it was forever she manifested Trikio as thereafter. Kikio. And forever it was Trikio after that with us and with several other people as well, I noticed online. So now we have officially coined our own phrase, thanks to Lyria here, of Robro in reference to Ray turned into a shepherd. And yep. I love everything about this. This is headcanon for me now. <laughs> Thank Going you. Going back and, Thank watching, you. and rewatching Thank the you. series and reading. And another way, besides the spot where yeah. Robro. <laughs> <laughs> it Beautiful. sounds so amazing. It's great. I'm so oh. proud of me. <laughs> with the whole situation with the battle off with Shin and the rest of the gang fighting, the shepherd they ran into, and the whole Shin trying to save everybody situation. With the time frames they gave us when Lena was visiting the spearhead base and the time, the date they had given us when that massive fight was going on. I kind of was hoping of a 
Lena shows up with the new spearhead unit and saving their asses kind of thought process because there was enough time for her to because with how smart she is, she could have organized something together fairly quick and try to track them down. This is true. I mean, there's still the possibility, though. We we haven't the series. It's not over. So obviously there's going to be a second season. So there's still the possibility that could go down. Because that was kind of a thought I was having because of just the tones that they were giving. The, oh, yeah. And the yeah, time yeah. and the big time gap between because if I remember, it was the 13th, yeah. like something the third month. It was the same month for both situations. But hers was like the visit was like on the 13th like and their fight was on the weeks. 30th. Yeah. Like two, mm-hmm. two and a half weeks. So uh-huh. there was a way to pull something together there. Yeah. But the time frame between them actually fighting uh, Robro and her visiting the camp was again two, two and a half weeks. Yeah. That one is there's really there's nothing because you obviously we don't know what Lena had to put up with after Robro. I mean, honestly, the only thing that we know it, when she comes and visits the camp is that she has been on house arrest. Mm-hmm. And that's most likely because of firing the mortars. Defying, yeah, defying orders and firing the mortars and the way she was talking to Jerome. It's hard to say what else went down. Maybe yeah. we'll get more information about that going into season two. Maybe we won't. Because we don't know what happened to um, crap, her friend. Annette. Oh, yeah, Annette. That Annette. one yeah, bitch. Amazing. <laughs> because she I'm just I, so I, don't I like still her. think I don't like her I, I can't I think in the end even when we I still think at the end that there was even though she showed what she showed but also there was probably a process thing processing in her mind deeply that she wasn't showing expressions for because obviously you saw how she felt when she found out Undertaker was actually Shin yeah so there was a number of things Going through that dome of hers. I mean, mixed feelings, you know, con- contempt for herself, contempt for the 86. It's it's insane what she must have been actually trying to process. Mm. Yeah. And the things that she's dealt with and compartmentalized. Mm-hmm. It's like probably one of the thoughts is like, should I help Lena or like, can I should I continue helping Lena or should I help uh, find a path to help the 86 in my own way or. I I, I don't I trust her, her at all. Yeah, I'm gonna, turn her in. <laughs> I still feel like she's gonna. He's a backstabber. I feel like this is gonna go nasty, but we'll see. Yeah, there's so I much forget. with her right now. There, there's a lot. Yeah, she's too self-preserving. Yeah, yeah she's exactly. A coward is what she is. So, getting back to my question, so basically, you feel like if the season had wrapped maybe mid-conflict with Robro, mm-hmm. like maybe. You know, the unit gets disabled right before Lena intervenes. Like, do you think that would have been an epic enough cliff cliffhanger for you? Or do you think I think it would have been a now I think it would have if they ended it there, it would have been a good cliffhanger, but also a way to end it. But leaving it to your own imagination, because they from what they give a lot of detail, they give a lot of emotions and throughout the series. So. There's a number of ways that somebody with a creative mind or just that really enjoys a series could think and make so many different chain of effect, a matter a chaining of uh, events off of that. For me, I yeah. think the row bro fight needed to be done because I feel like that was a bigger emotional impact. I feel like it wouldn't have been as emotional if they would have dragged it out. So I'm glad that no. they finished it, got it done with, and they ended it where we ended it at. Yeah. I really yeah, do think I, it's a really good ending. From what they gave us, I think the ending, what we got, was a pretty good ending to begin with. What they got. Yeah, I, I agree more with Leary on this one, where Robo fight, I think it was framed almost perfectly. Yeah. In the fact of you got you got the build up leading mm-hmm. up to it, you know, throughout these little hints and whispers throughout the earlier episodes, all the way up to that little teaser of the speech that that Ray was giving from inside mm-hmm. the shepherd. Yeah. At the end of the previous episode, as the targeting system zoomed in on Spearhead. Yeah. Going straight into the actual fight with Lena's assistants coming in almost deus ex machina style. <laughs> let's, I mean, come on, let's face it. It Had she not intervened when she did, it would have been game over. Yeah. But that was almost Definitely. deus ex machina for me. Beautifully done, but it. It could have been done wrong. I think that's the biggest contention point for me was if they had left it in the cliffhanger of Ray almost killing Shin for three or four months, 
and then come back with, okay, here's Shen about to get destroyed by his brother, and Lena pops up out of nowhere and goes, hey, look, mortar fire. <laughs> and Shen snaps to and blows his brother in half, you know, blows his brother to bits. I, I wouldn't have been satisfied. I've been like, wow, I Agreed. waited four months to watch Lena come out of nowhere and <laughs> and drop a, a dud. Yeah. I was, and I honestly would have felt like the creators had done the same thing. They dropped a dud on me. Yeah. They with ending after that whole fight would have been a good spot. It's one of those spots that could have ended fairly well. And then if they decided to pick up again at some point, it would have now that's an it idea wouldn't too. have left it wouldn't left as much of a hype as the way with it what they gave us now with because definitely with the way Lena was reacting at the very end and the yeah, emotion exactly. she showed the dire look in her eyes. Yeah, the end of that episode with them all leaving the territory and Lena crying on the sidewalk and the visualization of, of the five birds flying away. Actually, that would have been a pretty good spot. That would have been a yeah. great ending. Mm -hmm. That would have been a great ending. Because, because then, had the series not done so well, that would have been a great, okay, where do we go from here? Do we reference people to the light novels? Do we go into the he to the head cans of fan fiction? Do we pick it back up for another season? Because you know, they could have left it so open at that point. Yeah, now they've ruined themselves in having to show a resolution yeah. of... What the hell is Lena going to do? What's up with the new 86 squad at Spearhead? Yeah. You know, what's going on with Shin laying there beheaded in the mm. imagery that we see? You know, what happens to the rest of the gang? Anju and Karina and, and Raiden and uh, Thea. Because leaving at that end where, the, where they're flying away and Lena's just down on her knees would have been a great spot to end. But also because it kind of, from the story that was being told originally like in the early stages of the series... That was pretty much the ending because the main perspective was Shin looking for his brother and them looking for freedom. And they so, got both. So here's a note about that. That was volume one. Mm -hmm. That was volume oh, one. Oh, yeah, I figured that. Volume I one basically ended with what we saw in the end of the episode. Everything we saw after that with them being in the Legion territory and everything after that, that's going into volume two. I figured. Which I didn't read it. So I, I'm clueless. The last couple episodes, I was, I was clueless as well because I, I didn't realize that. Because it felt the whole time, it felt like a build up, but it was kind of a boring build up at first. <laughs> yeah, but I, and I'm actually really glad that they put the beginning part of Volume Two at the end of Volume One like that for the first season because, like you just said, Wolf, that would have been a very dragging arduous start to a second season it would have definitely would have you know leaving it off with the cliffhanger that we have now of mm -hmm. is shin dead is the rest of spearhead dead what the hell is you know lena gonna do you know where is this going what the hell is this new mech you know yeah. all of these things because it looks it nothing like a shepherd no yeah it looks nothing like a shepherd very reminiscent of a juggernaut very reminiscent of a juggernaut and uh, there's so many questions and I know I say this <laughs> throughout the last several series that we've done, but I love that anticipation and I love having questions about what's coming next. Even though I know some of it, yeah. I love wanting to know. The anticipation and the excitement of what comes next is what keeps me invested in a series like 86. Because I've had discussions with other people, you know, outside our show and stuff, and they said, oh, I just, I really can't get into 86. I'm like, why? Why? I'm like, it has... Uh, just looking at it from the anime aspect, okay, it has drama, it has historical connection and influence, it has action, it has character, it has heart, it has some of the best development I've seen in story and characters in most anime I've watched. I think the last really good development one I've had was uh, Overlord. Yeah, exactly. You know, and we're not seeing things that we've seen done every time in every other anime before. Yeah. We're getting fresh influences here from historical pr perspectives. So if that's not your type of if that's not your cup of tea, then OK, I won't begrudge you on that. You know, no argument for me, but give it a chance. It, you know, that three episode rule that we always talk about. Yep. You know, give it the three episodes, because by the time you get into three or four, it's picking up, it's kicking off and it's kicking ass. The thing is, and a lot of it's like not just us, but a lot of reviewers I watch like they follow a lot of them follow the three episode rule because it's kind of a really a good point to figure out where you want, unless it's one of those series that's kind of just there for comedic leaf. Then it's kind of, eh. yeah. Smallville. <clears throat> <laughs>
has everyone cleared out their thoughts? Yeah, Austin, O'Leary, you guys got anything throwing on this? I, I, I think we covered everything. I yeah. I feel like I covered everything the last time. <laughs> like I felt like <laughs> I went through a lot the last time. It was a lot of emotion last time, and I felt like I I think I got it all for. So. I think I think I brought what I wanted to to the table. So I'm I'm good. Good job. Particularly Yay. Robro. So. Robro, yes. Robro, yes. that's she had to have it. So to leave it at that, um, one announcement that I've kind of put off for a bit that me and Kaminoko will be, well, and maybe two others, not sure yet, will be at Blurred Con, July 16th through the 18th. Mm-hmm. And for our first con for the year, post-COVID, we will be live streaming. Thanks for main events. I hope you all enjoy any of the other content we take throughout the event. Obviously, will be uploaded as we go. But until next time, I'm Rain Wolf. This is Kirill Silverheart. This is Asana Silverheart. Leave a this like. This is Wait, let me say bye. I mean, that, was, that, was, that wasn't even me. That was, oh. I have a feeling I'm going to jump in the, the gun head. there, man. <laughs> Swing it in there with the outro like shin them blades. <laughs> Leave a you like, comment, and bye. subscribe. And be sure to stay tuned to convention video for updates about conventions coming throughout the rest of the year, as well as what we're going to do on our podcast. And look forward to our live streams of Left 4 Dead 2 in anticipation of the new video game Back for Blood coming out this October as well. Uh, Good thing you're there. (laughs) I love you, man. Later, guys. Bye. Bye.